Friends, I'm so relieved to be back in school after such a long break. I finally get to see my teachers and friends. I'm sure many of you are enjoying your time in school as well. But remember to stay safe, okay? We want to thank all of you who have posted pictures of your power watches. Let's have a look at some of your works. Thank you for your inspiring works. Children, continue to ask the Holy Spirit to be your helper and guide. When you are feeling afraid or when you are not sure what to do, call upon the Holy Spirit by saying, Come, Holy Spirit, come into my heart and help me. Last week, we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost. We are renewed in the Holy Spirit and empowered to go out and spread Jesus' love and light to everyone. I hope you were able to bring that love and light to your teachers and friends in school this week. For example, you could help your teachers with carrying the books or cheering up a friend who is feeling down. Let's get on our feet and sing to Jesus, the light of the world. The world is searching for an answer a ray of hope in a hopeless world who can we turn to where is our rescue there is someone he's the answer he's the light and the light the way his name is jesus he came to save us. He is the light, 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 light of the world, and He shines, 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 all over the earth, shining bright, bright, bright. He is the light of the world. He is the light, 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 light of the world, and He shines, 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 all over Elijah? Wow, it's been a long time since we last spoke. How are you, Elijah? I'm doing great. I just had some ice cream. Wow, yummy. I wish I had some of that. Uncle Mark, can I ask you a question? Sure. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, mm -hmm. right? 
What is the Holy Trinity? The Holy Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three persons? That's right. Three persons, but one God. Do you know when we call on the Holy Trinity? Mm, oh, when we make the sign of the cross before and after prayer. That's right. Now, can you recall when else we call upon the Holy Trinity? Mm, oh, I know. When we pray the glory be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now, amen. You've got it, Elijah. Now, every time we call upon the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are proclaiming and giving praise to the Holy Trinity. Thank you for teaching me about the Holy Trinity, Uncle Mark. My pleasure. Hey, we've got to go and prepare for Sunday Mass. We'll chat soon, okay? See you later. God bless and bye! 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 bye. Children, did you listen to that conversation between Elijah and Uncle Mark? Well, Trinity Sunday reminds us of God's love for each one of us. He loves us so much that He gave us His only Son, Jesus. Jesus showed us how to live, to love and to forgive. He even gave up His life to save us from our sins. The Holy Spirit is love itself and He helps to guide us to bring God's love and light to others. He gives us the power, the courage, the strength and the joy to do God's will. Does that mean we can't do without one or the other? Exactly, John. God the Father speaks to us through Jesus' His Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't forget, we were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity is always with us. So, if we want to listen to God and do His will, then we will need to have a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, so that we can stay close to Him and live as good disciples of Christ. Let's sing this song to proclaim and praise God for who He is. You are here I worship you. I worship you. 
To help us remember who God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are, head over to the link below to print a colouring worksheet after Mass. Print and colour in the pictures to help you remember the Holy Trinity. On the same page, write or draw who you can relate to and share with your parents and with us in the link below. Do ask your parents to help you post it online. Now John, who do you feel closest to? Mom, I feel closest to God, the Son, Jesus, because He died and rose again to save us from our sins. Wonderful sharing, John. Thank you. We'll post it online later. So children, remember to love like God the Father, live like God the Son, and trust in the help of God the Holy Spirit. Now is the time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. Hi, welcome back. Now let's listen to Auntie Estella as we learn more about the sign of the cross. I've got a question for you. How often do you think about the Holy Trinity? Mm, maybe more than you realize. Every time you pray... You begin and end with the sign of the cross, and you invoke the Trinity. Let's think about the gesture we make. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I move my hand from top to bottom, because the Father sent the Son down to earth. Then I move my hand from side to side, because the Holy Spirit is sent to fill the whole earth with God's glory. Imagine you are tracing the shape of a shield over yourself, a shield of God's protective love. When you make the sign of the cross at the beginning and end of Mass, make it slowly and clearly, so that you can think of the Holy Trinity as you pray in their name. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the sign of the cross. It is now time to prepare for Holy Mass. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent, and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about the Holy Trinity. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this Holy Trinity Sunday, 7 June 2020. We offer up this Mass for all who are sick and lonely in the hospitals, that they feel the peace and the hope of Jesus, our Good Shepherd, and for all children to have a loving relationship with the Holy Trinity, so as to love one another as Christ loves us. Join us in singing our processional hymn, Holy God, we praise thy name.
So welcome everyone to this Eucharistic celebration. Welcome children as we now have finished this whole season of Easter. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity. So if you watch the pre-segment where we have praised God and they've explained to us the mystery of the Trinity is so part of our lives as Catholics, so much part of our faith, right? Even the sign of the cross that we make reminds us that we were baptised in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you will, know, you will notice in this Mass, there'll be many times when the Trinity is invoked. So I'd like to invite you, children, parents, those of you who are watching, to observe and notice how often in this Eucharist we hear the Trinity being mentioned. And so we begin by blessing ourselves in the name of the Trinity, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we come to encounter our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus who loves us so much, He is inviting us to come to Him. But the things which are preventing us from going to God are the sins in our lives. When we have failed to love God, failed to love the people around us, we are putting the obstacle. And we want to come to encounter the Lord, and so we ask the Lord, to heal us, to reconcile us, to restore us into that relationship. And so as we prepare, let us think of the times that we have failed to love and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses did exactly what the Lord had told him. He got up early and carried two stone tablets up the side of Mount Sinai. The Lord came down in a cloud and stood beside Moses. Then he said, I am the Lord. He also walked up and down in front of Moses and said, I am the Lord God, and I am kind and merciful. I don't easily lose my temper, and my love can be trusted. Moses quickly bowed low. He worshipped and said, Lord, if you are pleased with me, then don't leave your people. We are stubborn, but I beg you to forgive our terrible sins, and let us be your very own people. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord God of our fathers, to you glory and praise forevermore. Bless your glorious holy name, to you glory and praise forevermore. You are A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Goodbye, my friends. Do better and pay attention to what I have said. Try to get along and live peacefully with each other. Now I pray that the God who gives love and peace will be with you. Give each other a warm greeting. All of God's people send their greetings. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will bless you and be kind to you. May God bless you with his love and may the Holy Spirit join all your hearts together. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told Nicodemus, God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never die. God did not send his son into the world to condemn its people. He sent him to save them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, in the Mass, so far as we have celebrated, how many times have we heard? How many times was the Trinity mentioned? The word Trinity was mentioned a few times, but the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and that was mentioned quite a number of times. Starting first with the sign of the cross. Then the second part was when I, the priest, prays the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The third time that we mentioned the Trinity was in the Gloria, where we praise the Father, we praise Jesus, who is with the Father in union with the Holy Spirit. And then after that, we had in the readings, right, especially in the second reading, where St. Paul gives that blessing of the Trinity, and we had the Gospel acclamation. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. And in the rest of the Mass, I invite you, if you did not, if not been counting, to continue to notice. When is the Father, the Son, and the Spirit mentioned? And why is it so important? Why do we have one Sunday every year to celebrate the Trinity? Is it because we want to remember that God doesn't know his maths, that one plus one plus one equals to one, whereas for us it's three, right? How can these three persons be one God? But actually, maybe for us, the difficulty to understand it is because we always want to see things separately. We want to differentiate. Whereas God, in this mystery of the Trinity, which is so much part of the Mass, but more than that, is so much part of our faith, and even more than that, should be so much more part of our lives. Because we were made in the image and likeness of God. And so to understand the image and likeness of God, to understand who we are made to be, we need to understand and know that God is Trinity. But more importantly, this idea of the Trinity emphasizes that God is love. Right? Pope Benedict wrote in his encyclical, God is love. And what is love? How do you know that you love? Or how do you know that you are love? Love has to have two parties, the one who is loving and the one who is receiving that love. And that's why, you know, those of you who know me will know my favorite um, theme in, in life is you never walk alone. You should never be walking alone. Why? Because a person who's feeling lonely it's not just that, you know, I'm by myself. We are lonely because we are not feeling loved and we are lonely because we are not able to love. And so God who is love is not looking for somebody else. He did not make us humans, right, because he was lonely. God was not lonely. God was Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Spirit. From the beginning of time, God already was love. Because the three persons were so in love, the three persons were so united, 
And that's the mystery that we are called to reflect on and called to live out in our lives. When three things, you know, if you take plasticine and you make three balls, how can these three balls of plasticine become so one? When they are pressed together and so united that they become one. And this idea of the Trinity, right, we talk about this unity, the love that binds, the love that draws people together is the essence of the Trinity. And that's why this Trinity, this Trinitarian love that we are called to follow flows and invites us to do that in our lives. When we have a wedding, you know, now because of this COVID, a lot of weddings have been postponed. But what is the essence of marriage? When a man leaves his father and mother and joins with his wife, and the two of them become one. And so for us in the marriage, if we are trying to understand what does it mean for two to become one, we turn to the Trinity. The oneness of the Trinity is an invitation for a couple to become so one, to love each other so much, to give of themselves to each other that we do not look at ourselves we do not look at the I, but we look at the we. And this is something that we need to look at for our lives. We need to look at in the world, is there this unity? And the ironic thing is, for us, it's so much easier to be I than to be we. Right? And that's why we, it's easier to be selfish. Right? These are my toys. I want to play with my toys. You know, and then we always tell you, you must share. Right? But if I share, I lose. Because we are afraid when I give of myself, am I going to receive anything back? And that's why the way of God is that everybody is invited to love. When somebody is selfish, right? When your brother, your sister, or your friend doesn't share with you, then you'll be asking yourselves, why should I be sharing either? The selfishness starts to divide us. If we see what's happening in the world, the violence, the wars, right? even what's happening in the US at the moment, it's when people start to see each other and see the differences and start to want to be separated. When we separate ourselves from each other, we can't love. We can't experience that unity. We can't experience that oneness. For us in the church, it's so much an invitation to become one. That's why the church is one church. Right? Later in the creed, the word one happens so often because it is what we are called to be as people, as church, as the world. God is always inviting us and He's saying, look at me, I am one. Just as I want you to be one. It is difficult because as I said, right, we, it needs a lot of effort, it needs a lot of giving, and sometimes it can lead to disappointment. But just as our Lord Jesus gave totally of Himself, so much so that he knew the pain of the cross. He knew that he would die. He knew he would suffer. But he gave it out of love. And that act of love, that total giving, is what we are called to emulate. That's what we are called to go and try to be. Right? So those of you who are attending and watching this, and if with your families, I invite you to look at each other, right? Whether you're siblings seated together, are you one? Are you working towards this oneness? Because the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one. Because they love each other so much, there is that unity, there is that joy. That is love. And that is God. So the invitation for us, if we say we believe in Christ, we say we believe in God, 
and God has told us to love. Right from the first reading, when God revealed himself to Moses, right, he gave the commandments, it was to love. Jesus came to tell us to love. Let us focus on this. Not so much about how can three persons be one, we're missing the point. The point is, are we one? Do we want to be one? And it would require sometimes for us to give up ourselves. That is the painful thing, but I can tell you the joy that comes from it. When everybody gives of ourselves to each other in service, sharing, of ministering to one another, we will find that joy. So we pray, we pray for our families, right? Especially in this time when they are staying together, it's the ideal time to be one, whether it's to eat together, to play together, to share your lives together. Let us pray for this unity in the families. Let us pray for unity in societies where the evil one is trying to separate us by emphasizing the differences let us remember, we have one God, we have one faith. God has made us all to be one. We pray that this idea of unity, of what the Trinity really is about, will flow in our lives, help us to become more and more like Him, help us to be love. Amen. And so now, having heard the word of God proclaimed to us, we're invited to respond, respond to God by professing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. God sent Jesus so that we could know we have a God not of condemnation, but of love. With confidence and hope, we place our prayers before him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop William, all priests and clergy, that they, who are specially chosen and graced by God, be living examples of the love and mercy of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence, death and destruction in the world, that those in power and authority will work for social justice and change, while pursuing reconciliation and peace, for no one heals himself by wounding another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married and engaged couples, that their witness of love and self-sacrifice may be a reminder of Christ's self-giving love for us and all the human family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all of us gathered here, that the life-giving love of the Trinity may flow through us, so we may be untiring in supporting the sick and lonely, consoling the grieving, encouraging the struggling, and forgiving those who have hurt us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers, we pray in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, be with us as we seek to love all we meet as you love us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Sanctus, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. During this part of the Mass, when we come to receive communion, it's a reminder that we are called to be one with Christ, just as Jesus is one with the Father and the Spirit. And so even though we cannot receive it at home, I invite you to reflect and to invite the Lord Jesus to come and help you to make you one with Him, as well that His love may flow in you so that you will also become work on that oneness with the people around you. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So if I give you the blessing, how many other times did we mention the Trinity? Did you notice? We did once in the Creed. And more importantly, I'm not sure whether you picked it up in the Eucharistic prayer. Even though we may not have mentioned the Father, the Son, and the Spirit specifically, the prayer of the, Eu the Eucharistic prayer that we pray is one addressed to God the Father, of course, with the sacrifice of Jesus the Son. And we invoke the Holy Spirit when the priest invokes and asks the Spirit to sanctify the gifts to make it the body and blood of Christ. In the doxology at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, we have through Him, with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. The great praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, the highest point of our Eucharistic celebration. And now we come to the part where I will bless you when in the sign of the cross, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, so that you to continue to grow in this love, to grow, to become more and more like God, so that God's love can flow to you, to the people around you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh, hey there, I'm Seminarian Eugene. And I'm Seminarian Marcus. And both of us are in formation in the St. Francis Xavier Major Seminary of Singapore. You know, in the past, I had always thought that the only way I could connect with God and the church was through the Mass. But did you know that there is yet another way that the people of God have been doing so for centuries? That is true, the Divine Office. Welcome to the first of a series of videos on the Divine Office, where we share more about our tradition. And we hope that at the end of this, you too will embark on this journey of prayer in Christ.
Now let us begin by asking, what is the divine office? Now the word divine clearly means that it has something to do with God, while office points to some kind of work or duty to be done. So you may then ask, what exactly is this work to be done? And who does it? Well, in the Gospel of St. Luke, Jesus himself asks us to pray continually and to never lose heart. Now the divine office is our response, the church's response to Christ, to pray unceasingly with him to the Father for the world. This act of praying is the work. It is important to know that the prayer is neither private nor individual. You know, like how we usually pray to God? Is this me and God? For when we pray the divine office, we are really praying together as a church, as the body of Christ. Can you imagine all of us praying the one same prayer together with all the other members of the church around the world? And to top it off, we are participating in the prayer of Jesus Christ, the head of the mystical body. For when we pray the divine office, we are also joining Christ in his prayer for the salvation of all mankind. Hence, we are not just praying for ourselves, but we are joining him in praying for the needs of the whole world. So in this divine office, we unite ourselves with Christ in his prayer of praise and thanksgiving to the Father. So the divine office is also known as the liturgy of the hours. And the prayers in the divine office primarily come from the word of God, experienced in the Psalms and various passages of scripture. And these are prayed at different hours of the day. So the divine office is still accessible to us even now. You can go to Universalist, which will direct you automatically to the prayer of the day. Just follow the tiny URL or this QR code. My dear brothers and sisters, this is an opportune time for us to reclaim our tradition as it being the prayer of the people. You know, Eugene and I both come from different backgrounds and we both go through different experiences in formation. But I find that whenever we both come to pray together, we come to share in each other's joys and pains. So when you pray with us, we share in your joys and struggles, one body in Christ and one church with Christ our head. We really pray together through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ. Let us take up the habit of praying the divine office today so that we may be united as one with Christ and his church. So we look forward to seeing you in the next videos so where we will delve deeper into more details of, of the depth of this liturgy. Till then, do keep us seminarians in your prayers and we will also pray for you. This is Seminary Eugene. And this has been Seminary Marcus. Goodbye, Goodbye and God, God bless. bless. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a spike in humanitarian needs all around the world. Many are unable to afford the basic essentials to protect themselves from the spread of the virus, leaving their families and their communities vulnerable. Medical personnel, relief workers and missionaries are facing a shortage of protective equipment as they serve to feed the hungry and provide relief. There is a crucial need to help supply and distribute protective equipment like face masks and hand sanitizers to the poor, refugees, displaced migrant workers and other impoverished communities. There is also a growing need to raise awareness on personal hygiene and to educate methods of slowing community spread of COVID-19. To alleviate the burden on those who are greatly affected by the pandemic, Caris has been sending aid to support the missionaries on the ground. Caris, we have 20 organisations serving the poor and there are so many requests. Huh? They have received $11 million of requests. God loves a cheerful giver. When you give, uh, give with a happy heart, a joyful heart. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Donate today and make hope happen. Caris. 
Caritas Humanitarian Aid and Relief Initiatives Singapore. For details on how you can donate and help in other ways, visit makehopehappen.caris-singapore.org. Dear friends in the Lord, peace and joy of the risen Christ. I'm making this appeal with a heavy heart of knowing that many of you are going through many challenges during this unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic outbreak that has launched our nation and the world into a crisis. Everyone is affected. Our Archdiocese too is weathering the storm. Our whole way of living our lives and our faith within this storm has posed painful challenges. So our true hope is to focus on our risen Lord and to trust in His merciful love. We need to unite and emerge even stronger from this storm. We need to trust that our merciful risen Lord will never fail to give us the special graces we all need for our families and for our archdiocese during these trying times. As your needs and my needs are different, and your blessings and my blessings from God are different, let us spend some moments to ponder on how the Holy Spirit may be stirring within your hearts to support the many needs of our archdiocese to which you and I are co-responsible. Actually, our Archdiocese has been facing these great challenges even before the COVID-19 crisis and the suspension of masses. The financial challenges are even greater now. So may I appeal to your generosity to support our Archdiocese however the Holy Spirit may move you to support. For this, May I suggest that it is good that you spend some moments pondering and listening to the Holy Spirit within your hearts on how God has blessed you and your family so abundantly. For freely we receive and freely we should give. Be assured that His Grace Archbishop William Go and I will continue to pray specially for you and your family and in the daily masses we say, take care and God bless you.